In a separate video, I describe how you can use linear algebra to solve lights out. The way we do it is, given a configuration of lights, we can set a matrix, and we just have to row reduce it modulo 2, and the final matrix will tell us what the solution is. So we can do that for each given configuration. right? For each different puzzle, we can do this process. But doing that is actually quite a lot of work, especially if you do it by hand. The question is whether or not there is an easier way. And there is an easier way if we make an observation that can drastically reduce the amount of work to solve this puzzle. And the idea that we're going to use is called row chasing. So let me first illustrate what that is. The idea is to turn off the lights one row at a time. So in the first row, I only have one lit square. We can turn off the light of that square by clicking the square right underneath it, the one that is marked green. And that's what I'm going to do. Now I have no lights in the first row, but there is one in the second row. So again, I'm going to click the square right underneath it, the one marked green, and that will turn off all the lights in the second row. And now I have two squares that are lit in the third row, so I do the same thing. Click on the squares right underneath them. And to turn off the lights in the fourth row, I click on the squares right underneath them. Alright, now I'm down to lights in the fifth row. What do I do? The fact is, any given configuration of lights can be reduced to a set of lights that is in the bottom row. And that's very important because if we know how to solve the puzzle where the lights only appear in the bottom row, then I can solve the whole puzzle, right? So what I do is, given any configuration of lights, I just apply row chasing until I get down to this row. And presumably, I could have solved such a configuration beforehand. And there aren't that many such configurations, if you think about it. Each square in the bottom row can be either lit or not. And so there are five of these, there are at most 32 different possibilities. So I can apply my linear algebra procedure 32 times, and I will have a solution, a complete solution to solve any puzzle, right? And in this particular case, uh, from what I have pre-solved, I would need to click on these two first, the ones that are marked yellow, and then apply row chasing, and they will solve the puzzle. So let's do that. So now I'm going to row chase. And as you see, I'm done. What this observation tells us is that if you are going to use row chasing, well, then you don't have to remember too many things, right? First of all, there are at most 32 combinations of lights in the bottom row. And for each such configuration, I just need to remember which squares in the first row that I need to click. And then I just apply row chasing, and that will solve the problem. So maximum of 32 possibilities, and I could pre-solve all these ahead of time. But of course, doing that would take away the fun of actually playing this game. Anyway, I hope you'll get a chance to play this game and have fun.